Welcome to Lassen May's Mobile Library. Now you look like you're in need of a story. One moment. Ah, yes, yes, this should do the trick. Sit down, sit down. Please enjoy Heist Night. Prale, the infamous city of lights. Go to any travel agency in the galaxy and they'll bring it up at least twice, more if you're planning on vacationing in the fourth standard month. See, the people of Hrale, and of the greater planet Ta, live in almost perpetual dusk after a cosmic disaster left their planet and moon locked in a permanent partial eclipse. Every year, on what would be the solstice of any other planet, Ta slips into complete darkness for a season. The Tauf celebrate this first day of darkness, Lushar, with a festival, lighting lanterns and candles and parading them down the streets until each town is bathed in their golden glow, chasing the worst of the dark away. The festivities were heralded across the galaxy, renowned for the costumes and artistry, known to be a popular vacation spot for anyone with an eye for beauty. Or so Percy had heard. They weren't really here to sightsee. Hey, Simmons, how's our ETA looking? The robot on his shoulder hummed, calculating. Twenty minutes and counting, Vix. I'm still working on the falsified credentials. They should be done by the time we reach the door. Percy smiled. That's perfect, buddy. Keep me updated. They readjusted their grip on the bike's handlebar, repressing the urge to wiggle in childish excitement. They had a good feeling about today. Because it wasn't the solstice celebration that brought them to Hale. It wasn't the bright lights, or the spicy fruit cider, or the promise of sparkly masquerade costumes. <laughs> no. No, no, no. They were here for one thing, and one thing only. Heist night. Heist night went like this. Once a year, if you knew where to look, the Heisting League put out an encrypted document with three sets of numbers. Location, time, target. The goal was to be the first one to make it back to the League with the target in hand, a task easier said than done. This year, Heist Night was set for Standard Day 253, just past Ta's 12th Standard Hour. The target? An old bronze sculpture tucked in the back display room of the Hrale Touring Museum. Percy was going to get their hands on that vase if it killed them. He was sick of getting close enough to sniff the target, only to have it yanked out from under his nose every single time. Not this year, though. This year, they had a plan. A good plan. A great plan, even. A plan so good it would knock the socks right off the league, leaving them no choice but to offer Percy a position on one of their teams. We've arrived in Drollop East, Sevens informed him. And seeing as you missed the past three, I feel I should go ahead and point out that there's a free parking space on the street side to your left. Percy pulled his hoverbike to a stop in the space gratefully. What would I do without you, Sev? Likely circle the block for an hour and miss the event altogether. Ha uh ha. -huh. They unhooked the latch, keeping their backpack attached to the bike, digging around in the front pocket until they found the pair of black gloves they'd stashed there earlier. How far to the museum? Five minutes by street, ten in the sewers, or seven and a half by roof. Percy reached into the bag again, this time producing a pair of lightweight boots, which they swapped their street shoes out for. Let's do the roof. I'm not in the mood for sewage. Scaling the rooftops of Hrale had been the right choice. As they moved closer to the heart of the city, the streets below them grew more and more congested, filling up with revelers of all shapes and sizes. Percy was doubly glad he'd thought to bring the gloves and the boots. If there was one thing to be said about the roofing practices of the Tauf people, it was that they were not built for climbing on. After only a few near plummets to their deaths and one altercation with the Tau of Pigeon, Percy and Sevens reached the building kitty corner to the museum. Ready, bud? Percy murmured. Sevens chirped in assent. False ID is ready, and I've access to the security system, now awaiting your signal. Make him go dark in three, two, one. The security lights outside the museum went out, all the signal Percy needed to hop down from his perch and make his way across the street. He had to be fast, he knew, because leaving the cameras and lights down left a massive opportunity for another heister to take advantage of, and Percy was not going to lose this year. It took a quick dash across the street, then some complicated windowsill hopping until he found the one that had been left open. He pulled himself through, then tapped Sevens on the head. Back online, now. Done. Thanks. Percy pulled the window shut behind them, just in case, and looked around. As their informant had promised, the window had taken them to a staff break room, complete with marble counters and plush armchairs. It was the air vent above those, however, that he was really interested in. Hey, got a screwdriver, Seth? Obviously. It was an old rhythm, easy enough to fall into. 
He and Sevens had done this enough times that darting through hallways and climbing through air vents to get to the target was laughably easy. A few years back, they'd been faced with heisting a mansion deep in the cliffs of Doth, a mansion that had been built upside down and sideways. It took a complicated series of suction cups and rope to navigate those hallways, not to mention acrobatic ability needed to evade the laser turrets. Compared to that, this was a piece of cake. If I could draw your attention to the grate on your right, Seven said several minutes later, I think you'll find what we're here for. Percy turned as best he could in the tight space. Sure enough, the door to the exhibit was there, a bright display sign winking merrily at him, no security systems or guards to be seen. Perfect. Sevens hopped out of the vent first, scurrying down the wall and over to the door's keypad. A few quick keystrokes had the door hissing open, revealing rows and rows of crystalline display cases. Bingo. Percy hopped out of the vent to follow the bot, weaving their way through the exhibit, passing depictions of the ancient asteroid collision, ornate necklaces and headpieces from a bygone era, even a large tapestry that seemed to be casting its own light. But there, tucked over in the corner, sat the target, a bronze vase hidden behind a thin glass display. Percy took a deep breath. They could do this. Carefully, Carefully, they eased the glass casing back, lifting it up and then over so as not to trip any alarms. So far, so good. Percy? There was something in the robot's voice that gave them pause, made them turn around and ask, Something wrong? Sevens looked remarkably sheepish for a being with no facial muscles. I believe another heister has breached the perimeter. You should really listen to your bot. Got good instincts, that one. Percy whipped his head around to look at the ceiling, face already set in a scowl. Onyx. Hello, Percy, his arch nemesis purred. Fancy meeting you here. Quick as a cat, she rappelled down from the vent, snatching up the target from the platform. Before he had time to stop her, she had done some sort of flippy thingy that had her out of reach, perched atop another one of the display cases, smirking down at him. Damn it, Onyx, that's mine, Percy cried. Give it back! Oh, this old thing! Onyx ran a gloved finger across the edge of the sculpture, as if inspecting it for dust. No, I don't think so. Heist rule number three, Percy said hotly. First heister to return with the artifact is granted inarguable possession rights. Yes, first heister to return, as in make it to the rendezvous. With the target. She made a show of looking around the room. Oh my, why... You haven't done that just yet, have you? Percy glowered at her. That's not fair. I had it. Darling, this is heist night. If you wanted a fair, you should have gone to the city square. Sevens chirped a laugh. Percy glared at him, betrayed, and Onyx, in her never-ending evil, used his moment of distraction to disappear into the vent, her laugh echoing through the ductwork behind her. In my defense, Seven said. It was rather clever wordplay. Come on, Percy spun on his heel, stalking past his traitor robot and the pedestal displaying nothing but broken dreams. Let's get out of here. With nowhere better to be, they ended up following the crowds pouring towards the heart of the city. As promised, the central square was ablaze with light, strings of lanterns weaving their way up and down rooftops, arcing over walkways until the whole square was bathed in their warm golden glow. Percy wanted to grab one and smash it until there was nothing left but glittery pieces all over the cobblestone road. Three years. Three years that snake had snubbed their prize and taunted them for it! A group of children rushed by, knocking into Percy and pushing him off the sidewalk. Sevens let out a noise somewhere between a beep and a shriek as he lost his grip on Percy's shoulder, tumbling onto the cobblestones. He bounced once, twice, and then Percy lost sight of him behind the forest of legs that made up the crowd. Panicking, he shoved his way into the crowd, tripping and stumbling over the uneven road. Easy there, friend, someone said, reaching a hand out to rebalance him. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I didn't... Whoa. The reveler was tall, natural height accentuated by their heeled boots. A heavy blue cloak draped across their shoulders, ruby red mask hiding the top portion of their face from view. Dark curls of hair tumbled out from under the hood in an artfully messy flop. They were... Quite simply, stunning, and Percy found himself wishing they looked a bit more like this handsome stranger. The view's better from the roofs, the stranger advised. Percy could have sworn they winked, but the mask made it hard to tell. I, uh... (laughs) 
Percy swallowed around his initial awe. Thanks? The stranger smiled, offering him a two-fingered salute. Then Percy blinked, and they were gone. Seven squirmed in their arms, flailing his legs, until Percy eased their grip enough to let him scramble up to his perch on their shoulder. Can you even see from down there? Percy asked him. Sevens hopped up and down a few times, feet stabbing into Percy's arms slightly painfully. Not really, no. Come on, then, they said, tucking the robot close to their chest. The shop just around the corner had a beautiful stainless steel fire escape, child's play for an experienced heister like Percy. From up here, the city was... breathtaking. If the street down below had been warm and homey, here it glittered like jewels on a royal diadem. The lanterns bobbed up and down, a million pinpricks of light against the rapidly descending night. Percy? Simmons asked. Yeah? Thank you. There was something like wonder in the bot's voice. Anything for you, buddy. A moment passed, then... I'm sorry you lost again. Percy heaved a sigh. It's... it's okay, Sev. I'm starting to think that maybe this just isn't in the cards for us. It's fun to try, though. And that was the crux of it, wasn't it? Percy liked heisting, loved the planning and the prep, and of course the event itself. And though he was loath to admit it, his feud with Onyx was kind of fun, too. After all, there would always be the next year. After all, there would always be next year. Who knew? Maybe Onyx would catch the flu, or maybe they could outfit Sevens with a bunch of spring-loaded nets and set him on sentry duty. If the League hadn't noticed him yet, then maybe they just needed to go bigger. They could focus on thwarting Onyx, or setting traps, or just generally sneaking into places and wreaking havoc. Who needed to heist when you could make a scene? Percy wiggled a bit in excitement. Next year was going to be great. Well, that's all stories end. Did you enjoy it? Be sure to let me know at Quinlan underscore Amadeus on Instagram or in the comments section down below. Help us spread the word about our little library. Share this story with your friends and be sure to tune in next time for another. Goodbye.